Hi everyone. Today we'll be learning about Pompeii and Herculaneum, two ancient Roman cities that got destroyed in a massive volcanic eruption. Pompeii was the largest city. It had about 15 to 20,000 people and Herculaneum was a smaller city about one third the size with about 5,000 people. They were destroyed in a massive volcanic eruption when Mount Vesuvius erupted in August of 79 AD. This was one of the worst volcanic eruptions in history and it, it devastated the region. It devastated the region and completely destroyed these two cities. Pompeii and Herculaneum are located in Italy in the region of Campania. So here we can see a map of Italy. Down here you've got the island of Sicily. This is the main part of Italy. Around here is Rome and down here is the region of Campania which was a very fertile region and uh, it's a place where they grew uh, grapes and they made wine and so on. It was a very good region. They are close to the city of Naples and not far from Rome. Naples is a, a modern day city which has about 3 million people. It's close by to Pompeii and Herculaneum and Rome is about 200 kilometres away from Pompeii and Herculaneum. The massive volcanic eruption destroyed the cities and covered them in four to six metres of volcanic ash. Here we can see a map of the area, Pompeii and Herculaneum. Naples is over here and this cloud, this black cloud, shows the area that the volcanic ash would have covered. So the volcanic ash would have spread all around here and went over to this area here. So it's covered a very wide area. You have Pompeii there, Herculaneum there. There's another city called Stabii, which uh, would have been able, people in Stabii would have been able to witness what was happening. And this, this area has all been covered by the volcanic ash. Now Pompeii itself was buried under four to six metres of volcanic ash and it's been preserved for the last 2,000 years. And Herculaneum was actually covered in about 20 metres of volcanic ash. So the good thing is the, the cities were preserved and we, we can now learn about them, we can excavate them and tourists can visit them. They were first excavated or rediscovered uh, about 250 years ago and they've been excavated over the course of the last 250 years. But they haven't been fully excavated. Uh, parts, of the city are st parts of the cities are still underground. Herculaneum, for example, is mostly still underground. They haven't fully excavated the cities. Part of the reason for that is they want to preserve it. They don't want it to be um, opened up to modern elements and deteriorate. And also part of it is probably a lack of money. They don't have the funding to properly excavate and take care of it. In this topic, we will study Pompeii and Herculaneum. And in this picture, we can actually see this, the centre of the city. This was the forum. This was the forum of Pompeii. And in the background, we can see Mount Vesuvius, the, the great mountain that has caused all the trouble and devastated the area. So this is quite a good picture where you can actually see Mount Vesuvius and how close it was. And this, this part of the city, the forum, this was like the CBD in a modern city. It was like the centre of the city, the most important buildings were there. And you can see this part, it's covered in grass now. But in ancient times, it would have been an open area, like a courtyard, a very wide open area with all the most important buildings, such as the basilica and temples and other very important buildings. In this topic, we'll, we'll study the two cities and we'll learn all about them because they were extraordinary cities. Pompeii is an amazing place. It's just amazing to see the technology that people had 2000 years ago. You know, they had sewage systems. They had running water. They had some absolutely beautiful homes in Pompeii and Herculaneum. There's one very beautiful home called the Villa of the Papyri, which is just outside of Herculaneum. And it, it was 250 metres long. I mean, it was an absolutely magnificent mansion. So these cities are amazing and they, they tell us so much about life in ancient Rome. We can see the technology that they had, learn about the people and see how they lived. And we'll also learn about the archaeologists and how they have been excavated. In the exam, you'll mostly have source-based questions. So you will have a picture like this one and you'll have to write a, a, an answer or an extended response. So you might have to write, uh, 
a few sentences for a three or four mark question or maybe write a, write a, a longer answer, like a one-page answer. But the, you'll always have these types of source-based questions in this topic. These are the famous plaster casts. Pompeii is famous for a lot of reasons, and one of the reasons it's famous is because of the plaster casts. And what the plaster casts show us is these are actually what the people would have looked like when they died 2,000 years ago. In this particular image, we can see some children. You've got a small child here, and you've also got a small child over here, and even one there, and there's a number of adults. So this looks like a family. It must have been a family that's died together. You have the adults, you have the children all together. And they're sort of bent over. You can see how they're bent over. When Pompeii, when Mount Vesuvius erupted, um, it, it, the eruption lasted for 18 hours, right? For, for 18 hours, you had pumice coming out of the volcano, which is like rocks. And you also had... Uh, poisonous gases coming out for 18 hours. And then it ended with a massive pyroclastic surge where um, huge amounts of lava came down and covered everything. But during that, during the 18 hours, there would have been a lot of poisonous gases and things. And these people were probably choking to death or dying because of the poisonous gases. So you can see the agony they were in and the pain they were in. They're bent over, they can't breathe properly, they're choking. And this is just one of many pictures uh, we have many human pictures of humans who, who died and plaster casts were made out of them. We even have animals. There are, there are plaster casts of dogs and, and even other things that, 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 that uh, existed at the time. And in some of the plaster casts, they, you can even see part of the skeletons of the individuals. So it's mostly plaster, but some of them do actually have skeletal remains inside them as well. But these plaster casts are quite extraordinary because we can sort of look at the, the bodies and the faces of people who died in a terrible way 2,000 years ago. This is Giuseppe Fiorelli. He's a very important man because he was one of the most important archaeologists who worked at Pompeii. He's very important and you need to, we need to study him really well and have a very good understanding of what he did. He was the director of excavations from 1860 to 1875. So he was in charge of the whole excavation of the site. He was also responsible for many discoveries and innovations. For example, it was he who made the plaster casts. We have the plaster casts because of him. He also made some other innovations that were very important. He developed the grid system and did other things as well, which we can learn about later. But in regards to the plaster casts, what happened is he noticed that there were cavities in the ground or holes in the ground. 2,000 years ago, individuals had died, humans, even animals had died. The bodies had rotted away and so a cavity was left in the ground. So what he did is he filled up these cavities or these holes in the ground with plaster and that's how they made the plaster casts. And some of them, as I said, even had the skeletal remains still inside them. So he is a very important archaeologist and a very important man in this topic that we will study a lot of. This is the introduction to Pompeii and Herculaneum.